We're excited about the program that we have for today. We got an email here from Heather. There are a few places in the Bible that says we ought to there are a few places in the Bible that say we ought to fear God. My question is, how does this fit with trusting that God is our loving Father? Mike, how do we deal with that <laughs> trust, love, and the fear of the Lord? Yes. Uh, you know, the psalmist says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of understanding, the beginning of knowledge. So does uh, we read that in Proverbs as well. What does that mean to fear God? Our culture has no concept of fear. And it's interesting Previous generations used to talk about being, you know, like a God-fearing person. Mm -hmm. Today, even in churches, sometimes uh, if you talk about the fear of God, people will say, oh, we're not supposed to fear God. Well, yes, we are, actually. Unless we fear God, we, we will never come to appreciate what happens when he waves his hand to us, motioning us to come into his presence and... Uh, boldly approach the throne as mm-hmm. his sons and daughters. No, it begins with fear, absolutely with fear. Now, fear of the king was something in the ancient Near Eastern world, the context of the Bible, uh, had to do with not only reverence, but loyalty. You only recognize this king as the sovereign of the realm. You aren't crossing your fingers when you you make an oath to this king as your only lawful sovereign. Uh, to fear that king is to respect him and regard him as your only lawful king. That is, is primarily what we're talking about here with fear. Don't fear anyone or anything else. Fear me. I'm the one who has the power of life and death. How much more with God than with the kings of this world? Should we say, here's the, here's the one who holds the, the keys of death and hell, as Jesus says in Revelation, he does. Uh, we should respect him and regard him as our only lawful sovereign. It means really to have a God-centered worldview rather than a man-centered worldview, to fear God above all else and to realize we exist for his glory, not the other way around. Now, the thing is, if we don't fear God, we're going to fear other things or people that we turn into gods. Whatever you fear ultimately is your God. Mm. So people fear uh, loss of income. They fear loss of their job. They fear uh, loss of a relationship. Loss of a relationship because they turned their spouse into an idol. Uh, they, they, they fear... Uh, that you know, their family is falling apart because they made an idol of their family. Uh, they, they fear uh, that uh, you know, the world is going uh, 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 down the wrong road, and we're so afraid of those other people getting elected. Well, you're basically making an idol of s- someone you want to get mm-hmm. elected. Um, trust not in princes— this almost reminds us. So to, to fear God alone drives out our fear of other things and other people and other places. Now, it doesn't mean that, that we still don't experience fear within ourselves, that we're not afraid of, you know, losing our physical or, or mental or emotional health, vitality, that we're not afraid of dying. Uh, but it means that we don't fear it in the sense that we acknowledge it as sovereign over us. Death is not sovereign over us. Uh, Poverty is not sovereign over us. We might be poor, but that doesn't make poverty sovereign. Mm -hmm. It it means that God, our only sovereign, has decided that we will be poor. Uh, So the fact that God is sovereign, that God alone is to be feared, drives out all the idols that we make that we're so afraid of, we're so terrified because we think that they have ultimate power and they don't. Mm. Mike, would you say that we could distinguish between, as Christians, being afraid of God's condemnation and punishment and just being afraid or having the fear of the Lord in the sense of not wanting to displease him, wanting to honor him in our worship? I was was thinking of, you know, you look at a passage like 1 John 4, 18, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected in love. And one says, I mean, we as believers, we don't have to fear God's wrath and judgment because Christ has borne that for us. Yeah, John says it's actually 
a sin yeah. to fear God's punishment <laughs> <laughs> for, we, for a believer. But we can still fear the Lord. In Absolutely. So we love him and want to honor him and be faithful to him. And I think that's really at the heart of what it means to, to fear God. Yeah. He, you know, Paul says God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-control, 2 Timothy 1, 7. After all, he says elsewhere, Romans 2, 4, that it's God's kindness that leads us to repentance. But, you know, the thing is, don't pit fear over against kindness Mm -hmm. and grace. Actually, it is the mercy and grace and love of God in spite of our sin that also causes us to just look up in wonder and awe and fear mm-hmm. of this God who is not like me. I wouldn't, I, I, I don't treat people who do me wrong the way he's treated me. I, I'm called to more and more, but he is so magnificent in his love and mercy as well as in his holiness and justice that it's all, everything that God is calls me to fear him, calls me to hold him in highest reverence and awe. 